What's up everybody, it's Blaze from Funbox here and in today's video we are going to have a look at how GMS 2.3 handles multi-dimensional arrays. When I say multi-dimensional arrays, I mean anything that's 2D and over basically. That's what we refer to as multi-dimensional because it's not just 2D, it also covers 3D and if you really want to, 4D arrays. Anyway, let's get into what we're going to make today. And basically what we're going to make is a simple animation controller. So for us, when we press a key, a specific key or a combination of keys, our character is going to play a specific animation. So we are going to have one that's just an idle, so there's no inputs whatsoever. And then we have three different attack animations. Right now, these this is a very simple and potentially oversimplified way of implementing a 2D array or a multi-dimensional array in GMS 2.3, but it is a method nonetheless. Okay, so we don't need this window anymore, so we can close that. So before we get into the actual tutorial itself, let's have a quick look at how arrays or multi-dimensional arrays are structured and how we can visualize them from here on out. All right, so here we have a simple one-dimensional array, right? And I'm assuming that you guys already know how arrays work and the difference between arrays and structs. Maybe not structs, but arrays versus variables in your objects. So if you guys don't quite understand the difference between them, uh, we're not going to cover that in this video, but if you guys want me to cover that, I can definitely do that for you guys. Right, so let's move on. We have here our one-dimensional array. A two-dimensional array in previous versions of GMS didn't look like this, but visually how we interpret it is more or less the same. So a 2D array consists of not the name, not just the name, and not just one entry, but also a second, basically an X and a Y. Now the way we visualize a 2D array is of course using the X position first, followed by the Y position, which is divided into rows and columns. And so you can see here we have um, row zero, column one, two, three, and then so on and so forth, or as many as you need. And then once it reaches the end of the column, it goes into the next row, and then the next row after that, and then whatever else comes after if you need it. Right, so keep in mind that this does need, of course, a an array name, so don't forget that. I just don't have the space for it. It doesn't look as neat if I were to write out the whole thing here. And then, and this is probably something that you can do a lot easier with 2.3, but it was possible in past versions, though not as easy to implement, is a 3D array or like I said before, it's a multi-dimensional array, so you can have more than three dimensions, technically speaking. And so in this one, obviously we have the rows and columns that we had before, but now we also have a third value, which we often refer to as either a page or a dimension, depending on your programming background. Usually I would, maybe there is another name for them, but I've often heard them as either page or dimensions. But we are not going to be working with a three dimension array because that that's really complicated. That's a lot more complicated than working with this. We are going to work solely with 2D arrays for today. Okay, closing this off, let's now take a look at our project. Like I said, we are going to work on a very, very simple animation controller, but hopefully it will show you guys and it will get you guys on the right track to using your multi-dimensional arrays in GMS. All right, let's open up our character. And we can see here that we have three events. We have the animation event, we have the step event, and we have the create event. Let's start from here and then we'll go left to right. Uh, that just makes sense to start from the create. In the create event, we're going to set our image speed to be half speed. And then we have inputs here and I've stored them as macros. This is going to be important, these five macros are going to be important for when we actually set up our animation system. What we're actually missing here is the array itself as well as an extra variable. These two variables that I have here, the control and action, are basically storing whatever state we have in terms of the inputs 
if we're pressing nothing or if we're pressing the up or down keys. And of course the action is going to be if we're idle or if we're pressing the attack key which is set in the step event. So in the step event, we are obviously checking for if we're pressing a key, either up, down, or if we're not pressing a key, in which case we only set it to none. And then when we press the enter key, so not holding down, just pressing it, we will reset the image and then change the action from idle to attack. In the animation end event, like I said, it's a very simple object. If the action is not idle by the end of whatever animation it's playing, it's going to change the action back to idle. Let's get to writing our arrays now. Before I continue though, you may have seen the 2D arrays from past versions of GMS2 look a little bit like this. Now, in past versions, this is basically our 2D array. And it doesn't work now. Uh, I, I've actually tried it, it doesn't work anymore. And so the difference is basically your X and Y values are separated by square brackets. Something like that, and it works. Now we're facing a bit of a problem here. If we are using these hard-coded values, then when it comes to pressing keys and things like that, or pressing our attack key, pressing our block key, it makes it a bit difficult for other programmers, especially if you have other programmers, to be able to identify what it is you're actually trying to achieve. This is where we have the use of these macros. So for example, if we want an animation, our idle animation to be no inputs and just the idle action, then instead of writing these hard-coded values, instead of zero and zero, we can just replace them now with none and idle, like so. All right, and this is basically our first entry in our 2D array. From here on out, if we take a look back at the image that we had before, we can see that instead of zero and zero in the top left, we instead have none and idle. And we can do that for every single animation that we have in our case. There are plenty of other cases that you can use a 2D array, but for now, for this particular video, let's use it for animation control. Don't worry guys, I will give you a couple of other situations where using a array might be more helpful than any other method. But let's keep going and let's fill in the information for the other animations. Before we do that though, let's have a look at what animations we do have available to us. We have an attack animation, a down animation, an up attack animation, and we have just one idle animation. So why don't you pause the video here and complete this array using all of these animations and using all of these macros. And let's see what you guys can come up with. Okay, so if you guys made an attempt to create an animation controller, great. Um, and if it works, then that's good for you. Here's how I came up with my solution. Right, so if your array looks something like this, then you're on the right track. However, I'd like for you to check your logic. If we have here, say we have up here, we've got zero and zero, right? Which corresponds, if you guys can remember, to the top left square of our array. We then have zero one, which is no, in, no directional input and attack. What about when we come down to up? When we're pressing up, we don't have an animation stored for our idle animation. And I think it's a good idea if we were to fill in this information now rather than fill it in later when we try to test it. So what we actually need to do is set up an idle animation even if we're pressing up and down. And this will become clear once we get to the third part of this video, which is testing out our code and everything. So let's fill that in really quickly right now.
Okay, before I continue, I just want to make a very quick point. When we are setting our arrays, strictly speaking, it doesn't matter if you're writing them in a backwards fashion. However, for readability purposes and for the sake of consistency, it's a good idea to keep the orders, say for attack and idle, in the order that we had them set as the macros. Um, not everybody, it's not a strict rule, but it's a good idea for people who are working on your other project to be able to refer to these really quickly, reading them in a really quick manner. So let's quickly fix that now. Okay, we're almost done with the programming. What we are actually missing now is the image control. So here in our create event, let's just say, for example, we want to change our animation to a, to play a different one right at the start. Say we want our animation to play the the attack animation as we start the game. Let's try that now. All right, so Basically what this line means is when we create this object at the very start of the game, we are going to play an animation based on whatever control and whatever action is set to. So in this case, it's going to play none and idle. Let's try changing this to, let's say up, and let's try changing this action to attack. Okay, that looks good. One thing before we go on, these at marks are accessors. Basically what they do is they read, they read a value that whatever we put in here. So basically if we were to write up and attack in here like this, then it's basically the same as writing out control and action in this case. However, if we were to change this to say, mm, down, then it doesn't matter what these two values become because it will always be down and attack. Let's take a look at what actually happens if we leave it at down and attack. Okay, so we can see that it's just playing the same animation over and over again. Obviously, this is not something that we want and we want to change that. This is where changing this to a variable that we can change with say inputs comes in handy. So let's change it back. All right, so I've written this out, but before we continue, let's just do one quick copy and paste. I'm going to take this line here, I'm going to copy it, and in the step event, what we're going to do is we're going to paste it right at the bottom. This is very important that we put this animation control at the very bottom. The reason why we have to put it at the bottom is because the first thing that we wanna do in the step event is check for inputs and then change the animation based on the appropriate values of control and action. So before we test out our code, let's go back to the create event and I want to talk to you guys really, really quickly about accessors. If you guys don't know what accessors are, don't worry, I will leave a full read for you guys. There's a page in the documentation regarding accessors. So if you guys wanna look at that in your spare time, that's totally fine. Or if you wanna pause this video and watch it now, that's okay too. Uh, but basically, accessors are a way for us to be able to read information from an array. And we read information by having your array on the right side of the equal sign, so basically what we have here, and using the at symbol, the at mark. Now, the interesting thing about accessors for arrays in GMS is that when we have our array on the left side of the equal sign, so something like what we have up here, then we can actually write, using accessors, we can write to the array directly without creating another copy of it, which is very useful, but unfortunately, we're not going to cover that in this video today. It's just a little bit out of the scope of this video. In this case, we are just using it to get the information of control and action from wherever it is in the array here, based on the value that we set it to. So taking a look at all of this code that we've just written, let's test our program and see if it runs properly. All right, so you saw there that at the start, it played that attack animation, but let's try to press some other keys now. We're gonna try the up attack animation now. And let's try that with the down and attack. Now I'm pressing the up key right now. 
and we're still playing the same animation. Let's try that with a down key as well. And you can see that even though I'm pressing the up or down key, it doesn't change the animation. And the reason for that is because if I close this, when we go into the create event, we are actually telling it that when we are up or down idle, we are playing this idle animation. Let's see what happens if we comment these two lines of code out. Let's save that out and let's see what happens if we try to play our game. All right, so it does that quick attack animation. Let's press up and no enter key for our attack. You can see that that poses a bit of a problem. The reason that it does that, let's, let's close this out. The reason why it plays an attack animation, even if we're not pressing the attack key when we are pressing just the up and down is because it doesn't have an entry. And so it skips this next dimension, this idle dimension, it skips it because it doesn't exist and it reads whatever's next to it. So be very careful when you're working with 2D arrays that you have an entry for each and every single one, even if it's just a placeholder or a message that pops up in your output window, that's totally fine if you don't have anything there. Just make sure that in terms of an animation controller at least, that you have an entry for that. Okay, so this is one way that you can implement a multi-dimensional array. We could of course work with a third dimension, but I think for an animation controller, that's a bit of overkill. To be absolutely honest with you guys, I don't see the point of using 3D arrays for games, at least not in not unless you're working on something very specific. For the most part, let's say you're working on a skill table for an RPG or an inventory system or a menu system, then a 2D array will be more than enough for you guys to be able to use. Of course, there are other ways that you can implement such things, but the 2D array is probably the most basic method that you can use to implement those. So like I said, skill tables for RPGs, great way to store information, things like the name, the type of skill, the attack power and things like that. Definitely worthwhile to store in a 2D array. An inventory system, especially if it's just holding data, then you can use a 2D array for that. Like I said before, a menu system as well, that can work as well. And of course, you've got something like this, an animation controller. And then on top of that, you can also use it for other things, like maybe you wanna get map coordinates in your room. So if you have, say, a strategy game, and you wanna be able to move your units to any specific location, then you can use a 2D array to store the grid locations and move your units according to wherever you need them to move. It's a very useful tool. So hopefully you guys learned something from this. I know that this was one of the requested videos and I'm about to run out because the next one is going to be networking. I still don't know how I'm gonna tackle that one though, but uh, stick around for that one if you guys are interested. If you guys learned something, you guys wanna see more, then please do subscribe. Click the notification icon, turn on your notifications so that you guys know when I post up a new video. If I do post up a new video, let's be honest. And if you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions, whatever you guys wanna say, leave it in the comment section below. And uh, depending on what you guys say, I'll have a response for you. Anyway, guys, that's all from me. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.